Hi, I'm Kyle. I'm Josh. Uh, this is Two Guys, One Car. Welcome to our car. Uh, <laughs> Dude, it starts with Two Guys, One Car. That's no, it's, the name. It should start It's with Welcome to Our Car. No, but it has to start with Two Guys, One Car because that's the name of the thing. Just, you know, just get in the back seat. <laughs> right along with us. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Two Guys, One Car, a podcast showcasing individuals who live rather than just exist. I'm one half of the duo, Josh, and in today's episode, we'll be chatting with Juan, a barista turned entrepreneur originally from Colombia. Juan was introduced to us by our close friend and guest on the podcast, Andrew Reese. Andrew was featured in episode 47, if you want to go and check that out. Juan talks us through his experiences with alcoholism, the mindset required to get permanent residency in Australia, coffee, the whole business around it, and much more. My personal biggest takeaway from the conversation was the idea of being grounded in your values despite what your short-term desires are telling you. I hope you enjoy this conversation as much as I did. We did have some issues with Kyle's audio. As you may notice, there is a bit more background noise than usual. We apologize for that and we are always working to improve the quality of our product. If you take anything away at all, we would love for you to send us a message and would greatly appreciate any likes or subscriptions. Over to Juan. I think I was with Johannes. Yeah. So even though I was doing a lot of Wim Hof, I started Wim Hof because um, I drink a lot of coffee. So I my body is always on the acidic spectrum. Yeah, okay. So I needed to alkalize my body all the time. So I used to like do a lot of like green juices mm-hmm. and yeah. all this stuff. Cause it's not that I was getting sick, but it was it was easier for me to get sick mm-hmm. uh, because I was tasting a lot of coffee. I love spicy food. Okay. I stopped drinking a long time ago, but um, so every time I, I have a lot of stress and then I have um, stress, alcohol and lack of sleep, this thing comes into my face. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. And then because of the on the 31st, I, I got super, I don't drink, but I got mm-hmm. super drunk. Yeah. Um, I woke up in like Turimeta Beach, like <laughs> by myself. Oh my like, goodness. You know, I was with a couple of friends and then they say like, oh, I'm leaving. And then I was like, yeah, cool. Yeah. I'm staying here with these, with these people. And then I woke up like. <laughs> so <laughs> dumb. And then I was like, dude, I have to stop doing that. I have like. I walk from Turimeta, you know where Turimeta yeah, yeah, is? Yeah, yeah. Turimeta to Manly Belt is where I live. Yeah. I walk there because oh, usually on the 1st of January, I have this ritual of like have a long walk and then just, wow. you know, reflect on my on my year. <coughs> That's cool. Uh, but this year was just sort of like, Jesus, what, what have I done? And then I try to kiss this girl. <laughs> And then she just like say like, oh, look, I just want to be friends. And I like, I'm usually really cool with that. You know, like, okay, mm. fine. And and that day I was like, did I behave badly? Because yeah. why, why did I wake up here by myself? Uh, like, yeah. you know, what, what went wrong? Like what went wrong during the night? And when... then I remember like, I, I tried to kiss her. She said, no, but we kept dancing. Um, and I don't know in what point, maybe I just like, make another you know these these guys i'm not usually like that but you know these guys that get drunk and then try and try and try with the girl I and mean, yeah. you're like dude you know just leave it you gotta, know, you gotta know when the door's closed yeah. right? for your ability to like to just stop like to it's almost like you forget that you got rejected because like, yeah. alcohol's a lubricant exactly because like, so the idea funny. of rejection like natural is in building us to then just be like okay that's it yeah, that's but it. because alcohol's like a lubricant for your social like interactions you just like forget that you got rejected and there's you also just, just an ego in it of like no no you can't say no to me <laughs> exactly. i'm going to get what i want yeah. when did the the introspective sort of self-development thing take place where you said on the 1st of January, you like to go for a, a long walk and reflect on your year. When did that sort of take? Like the, the ability for me to start thinking this yeah. way. Um, I think it had to do a lot with my ex-girlfriend, even that. Uh, I mean, I've been really like spiritual and looking into these sort of things in my own ways. But my girlfriend, my ex-girlfriend, she... She's very spiritual, and they, she showed me that path, like you know, about self development. And then the friends that she was hanging out with, 
because I was just like I was a bartender before I became a a, a barista, mm -hmm. and then it's like night to morning. Yeah, yeah. Really and it was like before that, before that ex girlfriend, I have another ex girlfriend, a girl from Tahiti, a surfer, and then you know our relation, we were really young, became really toxic, and then we broke up in a really bad terms, mm -hmm. and then. I was really depressed because I think it was my darkest time. Wow. Wow. I I was a bar manager. I used to drink unbelievable amounts. Like there's a month in my life that I don't recall ninety percent of that. Oh my goodness! I'm you know I don't know why I didn't get fired. I was like you know when people say like oh I am a social I'm alcoholic um, functioning alcoholic. functional alcoholic. I think that's possible because. I don't remember, but apparently I was acting pretty okay, you know, probably a bit, a bit weird, but you know, everybody like, oh, maybe Not enough for someone to be like, hey man, yeah. what's, what's going on? And, and I don't remember, I just remember I got drunk and I was in this stage of like lethargic, very emotional, very bohemian kind of like stuff. And I got to like Norhead, no Norhead, um, Shelly Beach, you know, the, there's big yeah. rocks and then I will drink myself to sleep just on that drugs like just poof, and then pass out and then that's the only way I could sleep because I was so fucked up um, my my ex flatmate back in those days he's a Chinese doctor and then he's not Chinese he's a doctor in Chinese medicine because right? mm -hmm. oh, I, I yeah. so he's Australian but he's doctor in Chinese, Chinese medicine, medicine. Yeah. Um, for some reason he saw me one day on the on the on the street and he's like hey dude what's going on with you i heard that you and elodie broke up and i said yeah yeah he's like how are you coping with that and i was like well not really and then for some reason we weren't that that close some reason i start open up to him he's like oh dude just come by the house and then you know we talk a little bit and then by that i was like sleeping on a couch of my friends so i was just like literally sleeping i was just this nomad just feeling sorry for myself mm -hmm. I because I was living with my ex back then so we split and then I just look for like places to live um, and then finally when I found this place I didn't want to sleep there because I felt really lonely mm -hmm. you know after you know you just living with someone and then you know have this routine with this person from the next day and then she had another person right after and then that hits the ego of a young yeah. man really bad so um, so I was pretty bad and then I started drinking so much until this guy I uh, said like Juan you know just stop I was like yeah whatever and then I got really sick and I started getting this but two three times worse like my face was deformed like because my liver was stopped like working because it was like shutting down because I, I just do so much alcohol that my liver couldn't process all this shit and then I started the, getting just for like the people listening like this is is acne yeah that you're it's kind about. of like yeah so it's kind of um it's not even acne it's um because it, it's not it's, it's like not a form of dermatitis yeah it's kind yeah. of like that that's more what yeah. it is I don't know the the, the war but it, it's, it's it's kind of little lumps yeah. that comes into my face basically yeah. Um, so you had it all over from the alcohol. all over my face but it was wow. gigantic like it was like you have a pimple but without you know the, the white spot yeah, without, that, with the, without the head and then you feel and it hurts like a pimple you know when it, it just red it's just like the red one that you just push and then mm -hmm. it kind of hurt mm -hmm. and then all over my body not my body my face uh, and I got really scared and he like I can cure you but you you have to follow me like mm -hmm. So he gave me like these herbs daily and then I stopped drinking. So I went cold turkey with alcohol from one day to the next. Like, and I was sober for like, I was sober not like, I was like zero alcohol for like three years. Like not even one, one zip. I didn't take even like uh, bitters or anything, like lemon like bitters mm -hmm. or anything, like no. nothing like Wait, that. So, so you went from, from like drinking like that much having, to cold having, turkey? Yeah, having problems. And no like, hiccups. Yeah, no, 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 like that. But I was like, I felt it. I felt a lot like the withdrawal. Yeah, of course. I felt the, the withdrawal and then I was really anxious. But I, 
so basically i turned all to like doing exercise so i became really addictive to like doing exercise and help like self-improvement you know that that those toxic people that go to the gym and then they just like mm. i was becoming you know one of them like mm. just like every free time i'll have i'll just working like out. working out and then probably like two months or three months after that you know all this anxiousness the withdrawal start wearing up and then you start like getting more like clearness mm -hmm. and then i think that that's when this girl when it came into my life then she was like really nice we started hanging out um and at the beginning i was just like she was nothing what i would just go for and you know physically it was everything i would look for a girl but maybe the way she act i was just like no mm -hmm. i just feel that she, we were really different mm -hmm. but little by little she was just showing me all the stuff like spirituality on you know yoga mm -hmm. um self-development books and you know uh, practices and at the beginning i was really like rejective to it but little by little she she was a really nice teacher in my life mm -hmm. she was just like okay you know i'll come back later mm -hmm. and then little by little like you just kind of blend in and then we got together and then we got this amazing relationship then i started like you know she was just by looking at her like she was doing like vipassana you know vipassana no, it's that? a it's a it's a retreat that you go ten days with no talking, oh, it's out of those. no oh, like no looking things. at yeah like mm -hmm. no looking so like at no anyone to like you did this? and then no she did that and then she was just like after telling me all these stories and experience and all this stuff so it was pretty interesting pretty mm -hmm. interesting the way that that kind of a spirituality then we broke up and then that's when I start like go a lot into my self development. So it's almost like she was like training wheels. Yeah, like and then after we went back together for like three more years, oh, um, wow. but that breakup was like a wake up call for me kind of thing. Um, and then I started like going do the first spiritual practice I did was Reiki. Okay. It was this girl that um, it was a friend of ours, and then. She did Reiki on me. What is, what is yeah, Reiki? What is Reiki? Reiki is a um, kind of like a healing technique that is based on energy channeling, mm -hmm. kind of. I, for those people who are listening and then are Reiki experts, I'm sorry. I don't know. <laughs> like, um, so what, yeah, what does it look like? Like what's happening? It's just like basically it's like kind of you 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 lie down on a massage table. And then the person who performed the Reiki usually is a person who like has studied Reiki mm. and then knows like how to channel energy around your body. So basically it becomes that person becomes a medium between energies. Mm. So like lets things flow. So I start like seeing colors, you know, I just like I'll get into a really deep stage of meditation. Sometimes I'll fall asleep. Mm. Mm. Sometimes I'll snore and then she, she <laughs> um, sometimes I fall asleep, but most of the time um, I feel like warm in the stuff. Like, you know, I don't know because you are with the, with the, with the eyes closed and then you just lie down there and then you start feeling like tingles in your body or like start seeing colors. Um, and yeah, it's a practice like last 40 minutes to an hour each session and then after that i start talking talking things you know like started getting counseling mm -hmm. from her because she was a counselor but but she was doing the, the reiki only but because we were friends she would just listen to me and then she, mm -hmm. she will like a counselor and then she will just like ask me questions and then it was weird obviously she was trained and then that was like sometimes i would just not like not my head like no and she like why are you saying that like why are you just moving your head like no and then she would just like start like pointing out these sort of things that will make me oh i'm just like in this sort of negation like a negativity or like you know something that i need to look into it and then little by little i started getting more into like the spiritual side self-development and then 
it started with that and then when I w came back with my eggs um, it was a different kind of dynamic into the relationship yeah I was more open to to live a different life that I was living with mm -hmm. like less less holding into my things and no like talking things out so it's so like communication started getting better I then I started seeing that actually that works for a relationship mm -hmm. you start getting like bigger and better foundation you start setting up your boundaries because I was before I used to like take a lot into and then all of a sudden I was like you know what I throw all this shit out you know mm -hmm. And then she's like, whoa, where did all these things come from? Like, you never told me, like, you don't like this or you don't like that. So where are all these things coming from? Yeah. Mm -hmm. have, you, have you had any experience with psychedelics at all? Yeah, I do. I do a lot of, I, not a lot, but I do ayahuasca okay. every now and then. In, like, in Australia? In Australia, yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and how, how have those experiences been in terms of? helping you unlock and it's been really really good actually i i have a lot of friends that played a lot with psychedelics and then you know this and then back in colombia i used to take drugs and then and then it was it was too much i think i have this addicted personality mm -hmm. so so yeah it was pretty pretty intense but um the ayahuasca thing was the first drug that I actually um, I feel it like a like a ritual is not coming from like the indigenous back in in South America it's, it's not like oh I'm just gonna get high it's a lot of ritual behind and then you know you know every every person is different but for me just like I don't do that often I do that when I really feel that I need it. You do it for a purpose, not for recreational, yeah. just fun. And then I, I've done three, two, two actually, I've done two. Um, and then it's been really interesting because I build up for it. It's not like, oh, I need an answer for like anything and I just go and then take ayahuasca. No, I just, you know, just build to like have a good reason why to go there. And it's not like, I'm just planning like in December I go there and it's kind of like wow it feels that now I need to go like it just calls mm -hmm. and then and then the first one it was really good it was um I stopped eating meat by then not because of choice I I usually I used to have or make fun of, of people that say like oh I went like I went vegetarian from one day to the next um, because there was some experience that you know got into my life and then I I feel that and I just like okay that okay yeah that's weird <laughs> whatever man yeah. and then but it happened to me it happened and then I used to love this pork sandwich we we used to have in this in this um, coffee shop I used to work for and then one after I did ayahuasca few days later because I uh, I was like doing this like diet for, for before and after but a few days later I had this pork sandwich and I got really sick and I was like fuck maybe the, the pork was off or something mm -hmm. um, and then I went to have this this breakfast that have meat, meatballs in that um, and I got sick again and I was like what the fuck um, and then every time I'll eat pork, I'll get sick. I was like, it took me like three weeks to realize that it was every time I eat pork, I was getting sick. Mm -hmm. After it was, you were trying to be you, this, you wanted the yeah, sandwich just like, to yeah. still be good. Yeah. And yeah. yeah, and the sandwich for some reason stopped tasting as good, you know. Yeah, wow. And then and then you're like, okay, maybe maybe this is it. Like uh, it's yeah. it's like the ayahuasca talking to you again, mm -hmm. you know, like hey. Don't you see it? Yeah. Stupid. Get rid of it. Yeah. Get rid of it. And then that after I did um I did chick uh, beef and then I stopped eating beef and then after chicken, so I became vegetarian for for a while. Um 
from then little by little I started introducing chicken back because uh, I was doing this diet for the snoring uh, actually mm -hmm. and then I have a lot of disease with my skin like this is the the autoimmune disease that has to do with like my skin and my sinus mm -hmm. okay. so I'm always like fighting again that and then usually um, acidity in my body uh, makes it worse so that's why I start doing Wim Hof and all this sort of stuff um, and then what happened is that after a while um, I start eating a little bit of chicken so now I'm, I eat chicken but I stop being like so hardcore on that if people invite me I have a lot of Argentinian friends and Brazilian friends and then if they invite me for dinner and then they cook meat i'll eat it but um i'm not i'm not actively eating meat mm -hmm. um so how long has that been for three years now okay so yeah. like i did like one year like cold turkey yeah like i usually go to cold turkey and then you know just go back to like try to see where my it's interesting that you say like you have the um addictive personality but you're actually able to just cut off things. Mm. That's funny because you you like you. I think I trained myself to do that to be able to cut it off. Because I think it was you know like when I got diagnosed, it was. I think first of all, this is when you get diagnosed, it's good to to know, mm. but it shouldn't define that. Okay, you know, but don't see it as a label. Yeah, for yourself. like you know, yeah. you can you can overcome these kind of mm. things. I don't. I train myself all the time not to be addicted to stuff. So I don't have a Netflix account. Mm -hmm. I don't have games in my phone. I don't do things that because I know that sort of things will 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 ignite me, mm -hmm. right? So I'm trying to like control myself, and all the time like look for ways to control myself. It's hard all the time because I believe like you. As an addictive personality or like you you always will get addicted to something but it's up to you whether it's a good or a bad thing, thing yeah. you know True. and then so i go like cold turkey on something and then you know i just kind of like seeing okay maybe the spectrum that i'm looking for is just here you can come back into it with a clearer mindset and almost like a non-biased opinion yeah. mm. and it's, it's hard sometimes you like you are a lot of people say that i'm addicted to my phone um, and I think I am, but um, people don't see it much that when I'm working and with people, like mm -hmm. I'm, I'm very good at what I do. Mm -hmm. Only coffee, but talking to people. I'm a like I'm a really like hospitality person. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason why I build this coffee trailer that way is because I hated to be in the in the coffee trailers that you are inside mm. because you don't get the connection with people mm -hmm. and then people don't see it and then they didn't see my my kind of like uh, vision back then they said but why why do you want to be there like you know so close people will come to you and then, and it happens you know people are sitting up next to you like checking how you make the coffees on the way like right next yeah to you like you know it. people sometimes are really unaware of like this kind of like environment like, environment, yeah. it's like the tables there exactly. you stay behind <laughs> but but it's good you know like i i like to you know and then when i start that thing i did free barista courses for anyone who could just oh really wow and i was like you know i i i train lots and lots of people. like now it's a little bit more challenging because first of all i'm not there all the time and mm -hmm. secondly um as you can see, I get really busy. Mm. And then obviously, I need to like make this business work in order to like survive yes. with, the, with the whole idea. So it's kind of interesting, like, but I'm still training people yeah. a little bit in a, in a, in a different environment. Um, usually I take people that already know a little bit about coffee and then want to improve like latte art or so during pandemic, I was training lots of people um, and some of them became really good and then they got jobs in, in coffee shops of my friends.
There you go. Because, you know, like you're getting like, especially, well, now, uh, now they're still having a little bit of trouble finding good baristas, um, but not, not as bad as when Australia closed the borders. Mm. So it was, it was very interesting to have like this kind of connection to people always. And that's also why Mulatto became so popular because during the lockdowns, there was a lot a cut into human interaction mm. and then the way I set up was like outside you know you clearly um, facilitate human interaction and then, oh yeah. man like people will just go there and then see me and then they say like this is the happiest time because those the the, the worst we were is like you could only go for a walk and maybe have coffee and then walk your dog yes so that's when people just go there and then because he was open, mm. they were just like happy hanging out there. And then, you know, just like little by little, they were just going around. Mm. Um, and then they said, thank you very much for like coming here every day. Like you are one of the reasons why I'm not killing my wife or killing mm. my kids, you mm. know, just like the isolation. And then, you know, like stay at home got really bad. Mm. And then Mulatto became very popular just because of that. Because everybody wow. will just go just go out and then just oh you know that's the, the guy in that park you know that's let's cool. go there because you want to do the longest walk or you know like it's such a beautiful environment and i really do like the the concept you have where it isn't someone in a trailer like yes. higher mm -hmm. level to you like you're you're very equal there's no barriers there's no walls They're like ducking out the window and yeah. So yeah you just you, the connection is so real you do feel it immediately as soon as you're there and I think it's such a beautiful environment that you've created. And I can't imagine how, as you said, how positive that would have been for people during COVID, during those really mentally tough times. It was, it was. And then it's funny, like, um, back in the days when I was reading literature about coffee, that's where people will go to, like, close business, mm -hmm. you know, writing books and all this stuff. And it's like, oh, that's funny, you know. And then now I see it a lot. In, in there like I don't know what it is but there's some energies happening in that park especially in that place and there's a lot of artists and a lot of creative people going there and then you know like I have people there that um, are like music producers and then you know but very good people are nominated to uh, award like Grammys and you know all this stuff wow. and then I don't know, I just like, oh, you're a very good singer. He's a really good producer, you know, like Let's this thing like, together. and then, you know, like a lot of people like, I mean, just doing this, like, oh, you're a really good videographer, you know, she's a really good like wedding planner, you know, just boom. Mm, and then wow. people are getting, um, people are getting like really, really interesting. That's what you want though, out of an environment like that, yeah. where different people come together and sort of, it seems like that, like, and it's really open, it feels like, conversation it's easy to be facilitated there you can see your side of like your care for human like facilitating that human interaction yeah. like everyone who walks past like we're, we're talking we were doing some stuff and you're just like paying attention i can see you shift your ga gaze like how many people are there do i say like I say the hello like, like saying hello to people ensuring that people like yeah, still like, feel the environment like, that, that's that's one of the things like it's funny, like my my family in Colombia, they have a. My family works with coffee, but my immediate family, my dad, and he has a restaurant and all the stuff, and he's he's an amazing, uh, hospitable person too, mm -hmm. and I think he trained me from little without knowing, you know, by by me looking at him how he interacts with people, mm -hmm. and he's such a like, showman, and he's like he's a very funny guy. Um, my mom as well she's a really good salesperson like she's been in, in sales all her life so like I think I kind of like you, you, great mix. That environment. Yeah. Yeah. you got the best of both as well and then when when I was working in the coffee company before I had the best job like no one was above me but the, the, the owners mm -hmm. and then one of them was like my my padrino I call him my padre, compadre so it's like my, my mentor. Mm -hmm. um, and then I 
just I was doing like all this coffee quality control. I was the wholesale manager, and then you know, I had no pressure from my bosses to do anything. I I built my own schedule. Like you know, some days I wouldn't even go to the office. I'll just go and visit customers. And then when I when I say to my friends like I'm gonna quit. Everybody was like, you crazy, like you are in the You're top the of the top. You have like, you have no better job than this. And then in some ways uh, it was true, but I felt that, you know, that I lacked some, so some family. stuff. Yeah. And then I didn't know back then. Was that in Colombia? No, it was here in Australia. Okay, it so was we're... here actually in Monaville. Oh, there you go. Coffee Brothers is oh, the yeah. name. Oh, yeah. I love their coffee. Yeah. There's coffee more. Brothers. We were just there the other day Last week, uh, yeah. Yeah. in Monaville. Yeah, yeah. I got there like all the time. They are really good friends of mine. Yeah, so. Yeah. The owner of Coffee Brothers is, um, well, he, yeah, he is, um, he is my, he is, he used to be my mentor. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I learned a lot about coffee because of, of the environment. People work there really into coffee. Yeah. Um, and then I had like the best job ever. Mm. He will take me everywhere. I'll go with him everywhere. Just doing barista mm -hmm. training training people around training people for competitions uh training people on latte art my latte art wasn't that great but back in the days now latte art is like another level but mm. back in the days you just like doing super well um but something was missing in my life mm -hmm. and when i quit everybody was like what the fuck is this guy doing um I create mulatto and even though I love my previous job, man, this is like I get paid to go and talk to people and share my knowledge for coffee and my passion. Yeah. And then, you know, there are hard days, you know, when it rains or things like that, but but the human side of the business have excels my my happiness, mm -hmm. my love for coffee and then when people see when you love what you do. Mm -hmm. Like I can talk about coffee for hours and hours and hours and then people just go there because they know that I know what I'm talking about um, I make great coffee I like sharing my knowledge even with my what they consider being my competition I don't think there's people that compete with each other like especially in New South Wales they have so much good coffee mm. I mean Melbourne people will start saying like we have the best coffee mm -hmm. um, but for example I have Charlotte on one side mm -hmm. I have Queenscliff on the corner and I have like two coffee trailers around me okay and I go to the coffee trailers and then I dial in the coffee for them I make them the coffee taste better oh really? because for me like you're far away like we we have two different demographics mm -hmm. like the 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 world is so abundant that you know There's like yeah it's, it's not it's not like you're taking my customers you know and if you're taking my customers it's because you're doing something better than i which then you would be like what are you doing that i'm not and you exactly. only care about just doing the best you exactly. can exactly and then you know just like that's 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 it and then um um this there's, there's a coffee um trailer called coffee app in Manlyville in the Coles car park okay. um, and that guy came here and came to me and asked me you know how much does it cost what do you need you know like mm -hmm. and then a few, few few months later he set it up there at the oh. beginning he was like kind of like hey very and I just like dude you know fuck awesome man mm -hmm. you know do it and then he's very every time he sees me he wants to give me coffee um, sometimes you know sometimes you have it and I just like Dude, go or like, dude, check it out. Is is you know, it's it's not as good today, um, and I do that out of love. You know, I cool. tell people like, dude, your coffee is not as good out of love. Yeah. Some people sometimes doesn't like, it. and I just like, dude, you know, I'm just what being. Are you lie? Yeah, <laughs> it's like you know, just being honest to you, because mm. even for me, like, I love coffee, and then I try that coffee is always on point, but this only so much coffee I can taste mm. during the day and if someone doesn't tell me anything you know I just assume the coffee is good mm. um, but if someone said to me like dude the coffee is not tasting right I can check them mm -hmm. you know and say like okay I can fix because it because you're probably the best like person to know the metric like mm -hmm. 
we're just the the average coffee consumers. Like, like when I was telling you that your coffee was good, I was like, oh yeah, I have no idea. Like based off what yeah. <laughs> No, but it's good. Like that's coming back to the question you asked me. Like if you don't care about people that drink coffee with milk, one one of the persons that I respect the most, he's like, the best coffee is the coffee you like. Mm. Could be fucking mocha with six sugars. But if that's the coffee you like, who the fuck am I to say mm. that? That's a shitty coffee, mm. you know? That's true. It's, it's very subjective. Enjoy. And they yeah. can probably rate that better than you could if you don't drink it. Exactly. And then, you know, like, it. man, once you, you start getting, like, into coffee, there's a part when, you know, you get too snob that you get very, really wonker. You get backwards, yeah. It's just, like, coming from Colombia as well, I, I see the people, like, planting coffee, you know? And then there are coffee farmers. Mm. They're not, like, you know, super educated people, but they know fucking tons about coffee yeah when i when i was in my one of my peaks i went back to colombia and my grandma gave me a a big slap of humility because she she's like yeah but your your coffee is not that great you know like she's like you think you know more than coffee than your grandpa or your father or like you know people that spend all their life working with coffee like don't be so pretentious well, she was more rough, but you know, mm-hmm. she was like, and then, no, she was, she was mean to me, yeah. but I needed it. And then that hits me. And then when I came back here, people were like, oh, do you think that will make you better barista if you do this course or this course? And I just like, I started feeling like, oh, you know, you're judging how good of a barista are you according to like, how many courses do you have on your resume? And I just like, dude, I just came back from, from a guy that, has no course at all. He's he's a coffee farmer, and he he tasted coffee and taught me twenty or thirty hours of of coffee knowledge that I have no idea what it was. Mm. And I was like, and I was like, you know what? This is this is not. Then I start getting really not rejectful, but you know, like more conscious about why people. In coffee, you have to taste coffee and then you have to write down things. Mm-hmm. You cannot tell people because you're going to influence the, the, the taste. Yeah. And then after you finish the session, you exchange uh, notes. Like, mm-hmm. how about this one? Like, do you think it's like, oh, it's full. Of, oh, actually, and then you just go back and then you just check on your note, check on what he, and then it's more like complete. Mm-hmm. But sometimes people like, because they, the person who tastes better or like have the palate more um, developed, they say, like, oh yeah, that tastes like a, I don't know, black currant notes. Even though you don't taste that shit, you're just like, oh yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. you know, you like, <laughs> and then I just like, I got rid of all this shit into my, my kind of like self process. Mm-hmm. I was like, I have no idea. Because first of all, I've never tried black currant. Like I taste, I taste syrups of black currant, but That's usually syrup wine. that doesn't. So how would you know it's black currant? I said yeah, like yeah. exactly. I just like actually, I I came clear and I came clean to myself. I said like I have no idea what black currant. And by the day, there's a lot of coffee in Australia that says black currant notes. Mm-hmm. I still have no idea. To me, it tastes like something else mm-hmm. because taste is a very memory kind of related mm-hmm. things. And then I don't. I am incapable because I still haven't find black currant. I go to like Paris market and I try to like when they are in season and still like I can't find them bloody black currant. So I still at the day I, I have black currant um, little um, syrups and stuff like that, but will not, never. It's not still black currant. It's great that you can be so honest with yourself. And um, we, were, we were talking before how. In, in the coffee world, I feel like you're clearly a professional. You know a lot about coffee. You take a lot of pride in your work. Mm-hmm. And you sort of have this side of the scale. And then you sort of have the, like, I work at Macca's and I make coffee. I'm a barista mm-hmm. side of the scale. Mm-hmm. And there's not really the in-between. It's I know nothing about coffee, but I could, you know, make a, make a coffee mm-hmm. and I'd know so much. And I love how you understand from the consumer's point where it's it's not always about the quality it's sometimes yeah dude just go get the 7-eleven coffee like 
people just want the shot of, of coffee. That's all they're after. Mm, yeah. And I love that whilst you have the knowledge and you're, you're an artist and you're a true professional in that space, you also get it from the consumers because that's side. from the automatic milk proper we we're talking yeah, about like and then you know like obviously um i i like going and try different coffees mm -hmm. and then and then obviously i know how to judge you know like i wouldn't well i wouldn't go to macas or starbucks mm -hmm. that's yeah. like no but <laughs> but just because of like um different kind of things from mm um it's just more like um business side of like how treat how the the, the coffee farmers get treated in those companies mm -hmm. so that's actually one of the reasons why i start mulatto because i want to change this perception there's a lot of things in coffee that don't get clear from this i guess all big companies there's a lot of shady things happening mm -hmm. But anyway, that's another thing. Mm -hmm. um, but coming back to the to the question, yeah, like obviously, if I go to a place where they, I clearly see, and especially because you know, working in hospitality, even for me going on a Saturday afternoon or morning in the peak hour, I would never expect a hundred percent of coffee. Mm -hmm. You know, if I get it, I'll be those guys are killing it. But I, even even a places that I go, I say like those guys are killing it because even in that working on a hospital in a hospitality environment, you know where where productivity and and quality have to overlap, mm -hmm. and then you probably get eighty or ninety percent quality, but you need to like pan coffees or food or you know like um obviously you will expect to have it always 100 percent, but realistically it's not it's not and then you shouldn't i especially when you're on the other side like you hate when people get really snob about these coffees like you know all these friends of mine that became really wonky oh this coffee tastes a little bit bitter it's like dude you're fucking it's it's, it's eight o'clock on a mm -hmm. saturday morning what would you expect those guys have like 30 coffees yeah. before and 60 after it's us also like know? they they're mainly sell food and they just have a little coffee machine on the side yeah. like that's not their their main business yeah. you're bridging the gap between that like, exactly. in, like the shows and stuff that you're so you have to be like just to like um fair with people that you know are on the other yeah, side know what you're getting like don't go to every coffee shop thinking they're going to be as good as me because yes. they're not going to be exactly. and a lot of people don't have the passion that you have for coffee which is mm -hmm. fine because maybe it's in you know making toast or or making whatever food they sell yeah, maybe maybe the, the the focus on them is like having this perfect um bagel or perfect toasty and the coffee is just the hook you know yeah 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 100%. and then then especially you know you don't you don't judge people but there are some people that obviously if you if you if you go to a, a coffee shop when you know that is like good coffee shop and you spec and you go like thursday or like tuesday 11 o'clock which is a really good time to get a really good coffee somewhere mm -hmm. And then they charge you, I don't know, five, six dollars, seven dollars, and then coffee shit. I'll go and say, like, dude, can you please check on your coffee? Like, I'm also on the other side of the spectrum, say, like, you know, you have to be held accountable for yeah. what you what you promote. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of like, I'm in between all these different things. And then when I when I go around Australia driving in the van, I go to coffees and then I. When I go to a coffee trailers, I usually don't expect good coffee, yeah. but there I get like super surprised when I get like a really like, yeah. like dude, and then I just promote them and I just like go to this place. Those guys are cool. Or even it's sometimes not even about the product, but the the experience you get. Yeah. Man, sometimes there are people are so good and they're, they're really humble, but you know, super good. Like mm -hmm. that there's like good quality or good people. Like, that's also for me one of the things. Yeah, maybe it distracts you from like the 10% loss in the coffee. You know what I mean? Like that loss. 
I'm just going to chuck a towel over the phones oh, and then pee. Cool. You guys keep going. Um, with the so with the van, like what made you choose to do the van over maybe say a shop or like um, a little setup? So the van was just because, well, everything started seven years ago. Yeah, probably seven, eight years ago. Um, I decided to stay in Australia. I came to Australia for six months. My plan was never to stay in Australia. On the, on a, was it like a, a what I was, was on it? a student visa. Okay, I was so studying came... English. Okay. Because my, like, I was, <laughs> yeah. I was studying, um, I was working in um, international trading companies. Yeah. So I was importing and exporting goods, basically. Yeah. And then I had a really good life in Colombia as well. Mm. Um, and then I thought that, you know, in Colombia, I was just like, you know, an office, office guy, you know, which is all like sure, yeah, you, you know, like, you know, okay. the and suit. then I was just like, you know, this is my life. I'm better than you because, you know, I do this. <laughs> um, and I was, it was good, but my English, like, I've been really lazy on learning. I was really lazy on learning different languages. Mm -hmm. And then what happened was that when I came to Australia, I just, oh, I do six months of English. Then I fell in love with the place. Mm -hmm. um, then after that, probably four years passed. And then I just, okay, I'm going to stay here in Australia. I was just doing like student visas. Yeah. You know, I study English and then I study again English. Then I study IELTS, which is like a test to get into uni or That's different right. stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then... And is that like on a six-monthly basis? Like, they do every I did, I did six days. months, yeah. I did six months and then I did nine months and then yeah. I did uni for three years. I did a finance and business administration. Okay, so you yeah. did that and then it's like, oh, they lock you in for your degree. So span. for like, yeah, three yeah. years and then... On those three years, that's when I, I broke up with this girl, that yes. it was like really bad. But after when I came back to my thing, I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna stay in Australia. That's mm. what I want to do. Yeah. And then that became my, 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 my adulthood dream, basically. Yeah. Um, and then I, I work, I work so hard. Mm. I overworked anyone I knew, but one person, one Brazilian guy. He's like the hardest worker. Yeah. He's the hardest worker I've ever seen in my life. In terms life. of what? Like in terms of like just hours put in? Hours and and purpose. Yeah. You know, he that transcends the amount of hours you do. Like if he's like why are you doing it? And that can just be the burning desire. He's a really good guy. His yeah. name is Renato. Yeah. Um and then I I think very highly of him because he used to be a banker back in okay. Australia. Yeah. And then I met him when he, he couldn't speak in English and then wow. we both washing dishes. Mm. And then, you know, a guy that works in a bank with this thing in your mind for you to be a banker or you, for you to be like working finance, you have to have like a mindset, you know, like Ruthless. a bit, yeah, a bit of pretentiousness, yeah. a bit of like, you know, I'm better than you. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a um, sprinkle of yeah, arrogance like, that you've got to have, yeah. And then he was washing dishes with me, like, and then for him to be from there to there, you knew that something very traumatic might have happened. Yeah. And then he passed through, like, very, very big stuff. And then he, this guy, works so much. Mm -hmm. He used to be, when I met him, he used to be really fat. Yeah. And then he was very ashamed of that. But now he's a build-up guy. He's a personal wow. trainer now. He's a build-up guy, and he like he has purpose in his life too. Mm -hmm. And then you know he's like, I'm gonna show people that you know you can do it. And then you need to like change your mindset. You know, like he's like he's a lot into like mindset. You know, like I was really miserable. I earned a lot of money, but you know that was um, happiness for me. Mm -hmm. And then he changed that. But he has this mindset of like you know going hard too. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you were working hard. So working hard and then I had a lot of friends from Europe usually that you know they come here on a working holiday visa they work a little bit but they travel around mm. and they say like hey Juan let's go tomorrow to like you know Queensland Tasmania whatever They're like no why not like what are you gonna do I'm working mm. completely so different like, vibe. Yeah. I was but I feel resentful 
to 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 myself because of that because I was like I do nothing but work and then I think in, for for international people especially South Americans that have it hard or like people that don't have the opportunity to have uh, working holiday visas um, they're really hard getting a visa in Australia is uh, a marathon but yeah. it's a, a mental marathon more than physically I work so hard and put a lot of physical effort but it's just the mental stuff because you're going so hard on faith because you don't know if the path that you have taken will take you to that yeah. and then you know life will just pull you down yeah. one and another and another, like one time after the other yeah. and then you're just like fuck you know there was so many times that i was just like that's it i'm just i'm done yeah i'm like i cannot keep on working this hard if i'm not getting anything like mm, and then my, my friend that, that the the doctor in chinese medicine guy mm. he's like dude he's he's very old he's well not very old he's very he's older than me and very wise he's like 50 something he's like dude you just have to eat this shit sandwich mm. you you're gonna take it better afterward mm. just just you know just do it and then you know he'll just keep me there you know accountable like dude yeah. it's not easy but you know what else you like life is difficult even if yeah. you go back to your country you're gonna have to suffer too you yeah. know that's why you come here to you this world yeah. Anyway. Yeah. and then I was like yeah you know and then this mental marathon and then I go to I go to like this business and then traveling I just very resentful to traveling because I didn't have the chance or the opportunity to do mm -hmm. so and then I start like I promised to myself I was in in a school with at uni with this guy and then we, as soon as we got residency we're gonna hire a van and then we're gonna travel Australia and that that stayed in my head yeah, and then the for the longest time and then I, you start follow I start following like you know people that are van lifers mm -hmm. and then you know every now and then you see on Facebook back then, Insta no Instagram. We have Instagram a little bit, but YouTube, you know, videos of van life. Mm. But I was working, you know, like saw that as a like well business that. Yeah. So after I got the visa, I got my residency. Um, I forgot about those promise that I gave to myself, and then it's kind of like you never be grateful to yourself like you know like when I got that visa it was really hard to get but once I got it I was like yeah what's my next goal you know and then through a journey and I was like start remembering all these promises that I give him all these nights that I was just like so depleted and then so sad and then I saw like but one day I'm gonna travel I'm gonna take this van and then and that was like the the motivation that keeps me going the drive. and then once i got the the residency i totally ignored that part of myself and then you're like what's my next goal you know oh wow and then by journaling i said like actually i have this promise to myself and then back then like my i broke up with this ex and i told you that was really spiritual so i was a little bit like you know doing ayahuasca as well it calmed me down a lot and then i was journaling it was during those days and I said like actually I need to pay myself all these promises and then I started like you know what I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna travel so my plan was like I'm gonna um, I'm gonna go around in this a uh, car very similar to this and then I'm just gonna go around for like two weeks you know just you know mm. go to the place I always want to go and then two weeks became three weeks, became a month, mm -hmm. three months. And then when I started the plan, you know, when I just actually sat down and then scheduled my plan, it was six months. So like, you know what? Wow. I'm going to, I'm going to buy this trailer because everything came out. I bought this trailer and I'm going to buy this trailer, build it up. And I'm just going to travel around Australia, whatever time. Um, and that's what I did. So I I built the van. I was going to. I quit my job. My boss were like, "Dude, what the fuck are you doing?" You know, like. And I said, "Look, 
I I pay you my deb as a you know like you sponsor me you like did all these things I'm very grateful for this but this is my time to leave this chapter and then I'm gonna go around and then leave yeah. I'm gonna grow up as a person this way and then I this is this is a promise that I had to myself and no one understood but no one needed to no because it was only you it was only me and then I just like so I set up this plant um got all the things organized finally i finished the van the van no the the, tra the trailer and i customized something in one little car like this so it was like foldable things here there was like a big mattress and then i just like i'm just gonna go around for six months so yeah i don't know selling coffees around in my trailer mm -hmm. i did that for two weeks and COVID happened <laughs> And then I was in the Blue Mountains, I remember, and then the event, and I was like, fuck. Everybody was like, I'm going to Byron Bay. It was like a kind of, like, of a hippie festival. Mm. Like, some people like, I'm going to Byron Bay, I'm going to Queensland, what are you gonna do, Juan? I was like, and then obviously it was my first event of grid. There was a lot of things going wrong in, you know, selling coffee. Like the generator was like turning off a lot. It was like too much power withdrawn. Mm -hmm. I was like, no, I'm just going, going back. I'm just going to, you know, fix everything I needed to fix because obviously here in Sydney or in, in Northern Beaches, like I have, I knew like the mechanic was here, you know, like the electrician was there, carpenter was there, you know, like. Had your resources here. Mm -hmm. So I just like, I'm just going to come back, fix everything. And then once this, whatever lockdown is going to, I don't know, two, three weeks, you yeah, know, I don't know, you know, yeah. you know, how long is this pandemic going to last? Yeah. And then, so it was like, I came back here, set up as a friend of mine for for a couch to sleep, you know, just like, hey, you know, I just came back for a few days, you know, just until this piece of love. Um, and start just fixing the stuff, and then nothing was happening. The restrictions still up, like it was getting even harder and harder. I was just like, Jesus Christ, this is, this is very uh, not good. So, um, back then I knew that New South Wales, especially Northern Beaches, has a really hard procedures to get license for, for mobile foods. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, I'm just going to try, you know? And then that's when I tried to like set up the, the coffee trailer yeah. to, to all these places. So I set it up there and then I got an approval in the place that I'm right now. And then I start there, like, you know, just for, for whoever lasts, like, it's gonna last, what, two months? So, like, back in the days, so I was like, maybe, maybe two more months, you know? And then not, nothing, nothing happened. Little by little was like getting more and more intense. Um, and then mulatto start blooming because, like, we talked before, you know, like, there was like, I brought this kind of like, comfortness to the community where you mm -hmm. can just talk to someone you know and then you pass by and then it was like outside you know like so there was an enclosed people people didn't need to use masks because they were outside they were not like oh you know like you know who is around you know like i'm enclosed you know so it was outside so it was really like friendly and open to people so it's mm -hmm. a beautiful aligning like yeah like it was it was what like you could offer the world in an instant needed man and it was like and i was listening to a lot of like good podcasts i was listening to jay shetty yeah. i was looking i was listening to ryan holiday i yeah. don't know if you know yeah, the stoicism know. guy, the stoicism guy. Yeah. um and i was looking from um, listening to um russell brand yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. and a, a lot of good podcasts um that was like building this kind of like purpose in me and then I was like seeing this like now so as what it was mulatto for like you know also the business side as well you know like um, I'm into business as well mm -hmm. as in spirituality and then um, I don't remember who maybe it was the Stoicism um, right. podcast that say like most of the, well, not most, very big companies in the world have been set up in time of crisis, crisis. Mm -hmm. you know, like um, FedEx, uh, 
G, what is this company? General Motors. Yeah. Like uh, all these companies have been built in times of crisis. And then people say like, don't you underestimate crisis because mm -hmm. some people get freaked out, you know, people yeah. buying toilet papers, you know, like, yeah, yeah. and then I just like, you know what, actually this is true. And then I set up the business, you know, I'm, I'm serving people as well, but you know, like come to Mulat, you know, have a coffee, you know, and then start selling and then people will start coming. And then man, Mulatto used to have like probably 20 people lined up. Yeah, and then wow. I just pumping coffees the fastest I could. Mm -hmm. And then I'm very fast, mm -hmm. you know, like in that environment now I'm very chill. You know, I just make coffees really chill. But when I'm in the mentality, I stop talking to people because it's time to work, you know, mm -hmm. just boom, 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 boom. And then it was days that I was just like, wow, this business is awesome. So setting up that business, everything was going super well and then i was like maybe this is time for me to buy a van so i s try and start seeing these mercedes vans every day and then i was like this is the van i want to get and then i just start like you know manifesting it like i i have a good relationship with manifesting mm -hmm. but i feel that sometimes people just over respect that manifestation will give everything. Mm -hmm. No, I'm just gonna sit down here and manifest a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, you know, like it doesn't nah, work if you don't put the effort on it. Yeah. You, you can, you know, you can align all your chakras. Yeah. Uh, you can, you know, have your manifestations practice every day. Mm -hmm. But if you don't work, so I have a lot of problems with my friends that are like that. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, you know, like there's no money coming to me. You know, it's just, but you know, like. I feel, you know, this time of the year, you know, I'm, I'm just manifesting this. And I say, like, how about you fucking work? work it's you a know? cop out for a lot of people. Exactly. You know, like, how about you? I wake up at five in the morning every day. People say like, oh, I go there. And then sometimes you don't fucking want to go to work. Sometimes I love doing what I'm doing, but sometimes I don't want to go to work. Yeah, you no, know? 100%. Like, it's, it's you got to put the work in like even on a smaller scale of that, we're looking at moving out and we applied for this place and I can manifest it all I want. But for me, like I need to do the most I can do. So like exactly. as like, along with the application, I, I contacted the agent and said, Hey man, like what else can we do? What's exactly. going to give us the best chance? Yeah. I'm doing more than just submitting an application and I'm manifesting. Exactly. If I don't manifest, well, I like it's, the, I don't know. Like I, I probably, I probably do manifest a little bit just based off the fact that I'm like, I want something. And that's just like, well, that's where I want to go. So I'm going to manifest my way there. But it's more like less about hoping, exactly. more about actually actually. You know, manifesting is just a reminder. It you're manifesting. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. You're visioning it. And then I'll say like to my friends, like, oh, that's my van. Oh, look, my van is coming. Oh, there's my van. You know? And then Santiago's like, dude, you know, fuck, shut up, man. Like, you know, we know that you, yeah. you, that's your van, you know? And, and he really, think... he really like, he really pulls your leg, huh? Yeah. Santiago. No, man, like <laughs> my relationship with Santiago is absolutely, so many people think or still saying like, I don't know how you are friends. <laughs> like we are. You just bust each other's balls. No, but we are so different. Mm. Like if you, if you want to know, a the, the antithesis to me, you will see Santiago. Mm -hmm. He's more introvert. He's really quiet. He's more analytic. He's so into things that I'm not. I'm so, like, we are so, so different. It's yin and yang. Yeah, like literally. And then people like, why you, like we fight all the time. With <laughs> Santiago, we fight all the time. And sometimes like we are rough to each other, mm -hmm. but I know that Santiago got my back and then I got his and sometimes you know he's one of my biggest teachers I would say like he he tells me when he sees stuff that I don't see to myself and he's brutal and raw and cruel to me I have that but... with a mate too like I have that with a friend like his name's Jet um we just rip each other like everything like he's the guy that i go to when i want something to not be the case so bad but he'll tell me how it is mm. like he'll be like no no you're like you don't want to be like that you are like that and like he explains to me why i am i'm like fuck i hate you for telling me yeah. that but i love it at the same time exactly like, like so we 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 
we keep each other accountable yeah, for each for other. a for a lot of things. Obviously, you're human, and then sometimes you off, mm. and then you know when we when we are off, it's like, dude, you know, maybe that was a bit too mean because that that has no that has not um maybe moral or like no like not nothing that I could take out of but yeah. your resentment towards yeah, me yeah. so and then we like we do I like the twi the two times I've been with with uh, ayahuasca I sat down with him too mm-hmm. and then that has actually I think that solid our friendship and then we 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 all very different and then he he pulled i think he is one of the guys that everybody sees me a really happy person but he he knows what buttons to press to like to pull me in a bad mood straight away wow. and then a lot of people said to me like oh, you you two fight a lot and then i think that me towards him more mm-hmm. like i I, I am very angry at him more than he is to me and then he he knows what buttons to press and then sometimes when you still friends you know like when he wants to because I think as a friends you sometimes you you enjoy putting the, the other person in bad mood you know like mm. pulling the piece out of one or like you know pinching on this like button that you know like it hurts but you know it's like Mm-hmm. And then we we do that a lot, but you know, like I love that guy to yeah. death. Yeah. yeah. Do you think the dynamic changed much when you became like his employer? Yeah, like, but that's the thing. Like, our relationship grew a lot to that because we have a really good communication. We have all really rough patches where um, there's this dynamic that will never change. That we are friends. So he's like, I said, dude, why don't you do that? And she's like, yeah, but why don't you do that? And then sometimes like, dude, that's my, I'm your fucking boss, you know? <laughs> you know, like there, there's sometimes that, you know, like um, it's kind of like, <laughs> no, it, it, it's hard because yeah, you, you cannot, he said to me, he said to me, I cannot pull our friendships apart. And I said, I don't care, I can. Mm-hmm. And then I will like sometimes, I sit down with him and then I have to be really like professional mm-hmm. and he's like he's like you just pulling up a show mm-hmm. for me to scare me out mm-hmm. and I said I don't fucking care if you if you believe it or not that's the way we're gonna do it mm-hmm. so sometimes sometimes I have to be even even more yeah. more of a like an, uh, an aggressive boss just to to set up the boundaries you know like we still mates. I still love you to death, but this is business now. Mm. You don't do this, 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 this. I'm gonna fire you. Mm. I still love you as a friend, but I have to tell you this mm. because this is this is unacceptable. These are the expectations. Yeah. Well, I think that's just you managing your. Like, if, if it was someone else, it might be a different way that yeah, you manage them. It's, it's manageable because I said do this, and then he'll have to do it because yeah. there's not this personal relationship. Correct. I mean, it will be a personal relationship, but not, not that as strong close. As yours. Yeah. No, no, we're yeah. And then, so it's it's hard. Yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. It is very challenging. But at the same time, I I I like I like this challenge because working with Santiago is like having a business degree in managing. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I have to like swallow my pride or like do this because. First of all, I cannot bullshit him around too much because mm. he, he will cut up on my bullshit. Mm. You know, like I cannot play that, you know, this boss that, you know, like... He sees right through it all. Yeah. yeah. So, like, I, I have to find ways to come clean mm. and then do it through... I don't know, through honesty or through, like, you know. So, finding these pathways have made me a better boss and then we I told him like dude sometimes I will be off because this is my first time being the owner of something Mm -hmm. because I I told him and all the time I repeat like dude you know like you don't understand the pressure I have on my shoulders Mm -hmm. the liability because the liability all relies on me Mm -hmm. not on you Mm -hmm. you know like I'm the channel and then I like I like listen to a lot Gary V because he's like you want to be an entrepreneur yeah let me tell you what entrepreneurs are like 
24 7 um 365 days of fixing fucking problems mm. you know and then Use the fire fire to put you know fires. exactly and then you know you, you're not gonna be in a bad in a good mood all the time and then yeah like sometimes i just like i arrive and then there's some little things that mm. as a manager or as a employee like there is a sign hasn't been put up Mm. And then it's like, dude, if someone gets injured, I'm fucking liable. You're, yeah, you're not. Yeah. And then sometimes, and then when it happens too often, I have to just like hold it like, like fucker, you know? Just, <laughs> this, this might seem a very stupid thing to do, but if you don't do it, there's gonna be a warning Some for that, you know? Like, hey. and then it's pure Morphe's law. Sometimes, like, I work in Mulata twice a week, mm -hmm. and then I took the sign off. And someone fucking fell into into this because these little tables I have. Yeah. If I take the sign that is a table, people think that is a chair, mm. and then because they are not fixed, so they, cool. they fall. And it was an old guy, oh. and, I, and I just like. Of course. Because I saw him there, you like not moving. I just like I threw my head. I just like fucking compensation. Yeah, like, everything else yeah, gone. And then I just like, okay, nothing happened. You know, like the guy was okay. I just like, okay. So, oh, Jesus Christ. And then, yeah, who's, who's pulled out there? Yeah. No, they're not mine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. those like, tables? Yeah. That's yeah. a nice gesture <laughs> from someone to put yeah. those tables there. <laughs> and then he just like, oh, Jesus Christ, is is this little detail that maybe you as a manager, you're like, oh, you know, somebody just falls, you know, mm -hmm. that's it. they don't see the consequences. Yeah. So this thing with Santiago is the relationship with, mm -hmm. you know, like, just getting things done in the right way mm -hmm. without bullshitting it so it makes me work harder to to look into myself trying to give the information in a way that um, doesn't seem to be like too strong too mm -hmm. straight but you know consistently enough and then I cannot bullshit Santiago so you have to always, it don't always put me on check too. You know, I cannot just say like, because I said so and I know better than you. He like, you know, know better than me. Yeah, my experience through like telling someone what to do and like managing people, I think comes from you care a lot as someone who is managing someone else because it's your responsibility. You obviously have care behind it. It more comes down to, can you convince that person to work with you, not for you? Mm. So it's like, how can you get them to understand why you're telling them okay. it's less about do this and then they just do it for the because you said to it's more like do this because and because get him yeah. convinced them to care about the idea and if you can do that then it flourishes because yeah. then they just do it on their own accord exactly. automated yeah exactly when when they know the the behind the why mm. they like oh it makes sense now mm -hmm. more than like they can yeah. empathize with you as well they don't just see you as an authoritative mm -hmm. figure they see you as someone who is trying to achieve something we're all attracted to mm -hmm. that so like exactly so it's it's hard but it's it's, it's a very good mm -hmm. like i think that if santiago wasn't there it'll take me longer to learn all this stuff that i've been learning wow. yeah and then you know it's it's very very good yeah and then yeah Coming back to the to the question that I forgot to to answer, the the van. After the van, I I bought the van out of um, an an auction because before oh. during COVID, you couldn't go and check the cars. Mm -hmm. So I bought it of an auction. I was working, and then betting online right, so it was a blind buy you hadn't seen the car you couldn't see because you couldn't go and visit oh, the place shit. because that was when they yeah josh is a mechanic oh, so yeah. he's like no <laughs> don't yeah. ever my, do that my, yeah. my mechanic was like okay so don't don't buy um a car that has more than two hundred thousand kilometers mm -hmm. and then you know just make sure you go and see it you know like <laughs> everything is good and then it was a very risky buy but it was like the only the only um van that i said well okay let's let's see so mm -hmm. you, you know pickles pickles auctions no. so there's like a website that they they, they do auctions mm -hmm. online but there's a very big company in australia and then they offer two months of warranty after you buy the vehicle okay, yeah. so there was one customer that came he's a mechanic for the government 
he's like dude the ambulance from the army are gonna be on cell in pickles so out of everything that we service vehicles for the army are very well serviced because they are the army so yeah, they always like yeah. but the ambulance you have to make sure those things run smoothly because you don't want anyone to fucking die in the middle of nowhere yeah, you yeah, know yeah, yeah. so he's um, like this is the best car you will find in market so get into those things so i went there so i um i said i have fifteen thousand. i'm not gonna spend more than that um back in the days like all the vans you will get for fifteen thousands were pretty fucked up yeah and then and then i started betting and then fifteen thousand came i was like fuck and then i was like <laughs> oh i'm gonna get it and then they kept on betting i said like, fuck okay eighteen eighteen thousand and you know what twenty thousand that's it and then i just like twenty thousand and then i bought it for like nineteen thousand mm. like, like oh. so what i saw this page past 20,000 you uh, think you would have kept going no 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 i just like this, just is the, this is this is the mass this is because that was the only the, the amount of money I, I have um <laughs> so like i bought it and then what happened was that um i sent it to my my mechanic and that van had 400,000 kilometers uh -huh. oh. and then i arrived to my mechanic and first thing he said like where do you buy it an auction how many k's 400,000 <laughs> and you're like rules. and I'd be like but hold on that like, you know a mechanic told me that you know like they were really good they were well maintained and then man that that van is 2013 and that looks so new I was gonna say it looks pretty yeah, pretty, pretty new yeah, it's nice. mm. and then I gone there and then there was like no problems at all this there, there hasn't been like I've been traveling around Australia for like a year putting in mileage going really hard on it and then it has never had a problem. Wow. And then there's just a problem right now with the alternator, but I mm -hmm. think it's just because all this electric yeah, stuff that I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it was like, it was so funny to see my, my mechanic just go like, just, oh, uh, the two broke. things I, I gave did. you two simple, two simple, simple things to go broke, follow. And then, but when he went to see, like, dude, this is a very yeah, good man. Yeah, he's, like, he's like, you've been really lucky with, with cars because I always get an amazing deals. Like, mm. you know, like I bought a car for like 6,000 because I, I, I crashed into that car yes. with my, I had a Toyota Corolla. It cost me $500. Yeah. I had it for like six years and it was like the smoothest car ever. And then I crashed into this van. So my car got written off because it was five hundred dollars. So I was like, "Fuck!" Um, but that car, that guy wanted to sell it, and then, like, bro, and then, and then he didn't have insurance. So he's like, "Look, just buy the car from me because he he didn't have insurance because he was going to sell it and the radio was going to mm -hmm. to expire. So the red, so the pink slip wouldn't go through if yeah. if it wasn't fixed. And then you know so many." so many bureaucracy around mm. that I for the for the guy it was easier to like Just give it to me mm. so he gave it to me for six thousand and then I fix it for like a thousand and then I use it for like three years and I sell it for ten thousand oh, after my. three years. <laughs> Best car year. crash you've ever had. It was a yeah. 2012 Hyundai. No no like I, when did that happen? Um what year did the probably 2000 2000 18 probably okay yeah so and it was it was so like so good and then i don't think anyone's had a better car crash than that. yeah man everyone's yeah. like dude you want to crash into this bmw i want to buy yeah. it yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And going like with, with the the travel topic so would you say for you realizing the dream was better or worse than when you were at university like dreaming the dream um of traveling i think you romanticize a lot the the the, the aspects of like mm -hmm. oh you know i'm gonna live in a van life life it's like you know you just see like waking up in the middle of the of the nature and stuff like that and it is it is like amazing stuff like i think i grew so much from it um going to like solitude is is important for me i guess in the in terms of like i'm very i'm very friendly and i'm very uh, social 
but I think that I do all this self-discipline and all this stuff I think like I need to learn how to be by myself and that has been really hard because being an extrovert you 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 need people to recharge mm. and then when when you do these kind of things is is harder on your mental it's harder on your mental status going mm. solo um but i think it was necessary for me to like learn coming back you know kind of like go all the way to the spectrum to the other extreme and then see but after how i i know this part and then i know this part i've been super extrovert of my life going solo and then you know people think that i'm crazy because as an extrovert you start seeing stuff that you don't see when you are introvert mm. when you look into yourself like I don't know if it was because I was an extrovert, because I was a workaholic, because so many things, but it took me like four months to calm my myself down from from working at Mulato. Wow. And also because I my family back in Colombia, Colombian lifestyle is different. When I told my parents that I was going to do this dream, first question of my mom is so funny you know my mom, mom's always care about your well-being and then they said to me my mom said to me like oh but you know you're gonna become one of those hippies you know where are you gonna take a shower when you go into the toilet you know like things like that and just like mom you know i've been living away from like 10 years you know i'm, I I'm, I'm pretty yeah i'm pretty sure you know i can not but they, they still my dad is more about like why are you doing with your life, dude? You know, like, mm. you're in the peak of your career and then you're giving up. You're like, why, why, why do you want to do that? Yeah. And my dad is always behind me, just, you know, you have to have stability in your life. Because in Colombia, now I realize that after a lot of, you know, going through this my dad do that out of compassion as well and he's like you need stability because parents want you to do well you know want you to be safe all the time but they don't see the growth on on struggling because they struggle they don't want you to struggle but they don't realize a lot of their excels in their life has been through struggle um so my dad is like why are you doing that with you like why do you want basically why do you look for struggles all the time in your life i didn't really kind of realize until i did these kind of trips when when i said and then setting up in in a place everybody's thinking like you know you just go and do yoga and then you know be with nature you're a human being you, you're scrolling your phone mm. and there's so much yoga so much meditation so much reading you can do in for a day or for a week and then after you just like and just walk or stuff like that, and then a stupid question will start popping up to your head you know and then that's when I think that meditation will start happen when you just like oh I never thought about this question mm. and then you just like because it's, it's a question and then you just start questioning and then start finding it interesting mm. all of a sudden like why am I like that it's why am I looking for struggling saying, yeah. why am I looking for this and then you're like maybe that's why I look for a struggle because I want to grow and then I just like um Maybe that's the way I, I feel that I'm moving to the next next challenge, you know? Why why am I doing this? Because now I'm strong enough in my extrovert side that I feel that if I may be introvert, I won't do many things out of fear. You know, because sometimes you, you make your decisions out of a fear. My mom is like, Oh, but you know, like I'm I'm very scared of you not having a partner because you need someone in your life in colombia obviously when you when you when you are struggling and if you have a partner i mean if the partner is good to you like this is a sign of comfort into that so in some ways is more 
bearable or wearable to have like struggles when you have someone there then you can just pull into it to look for comfort so right. they can give you they can remind you of the, why you struggle and like they can be the voice of reason when you need it but if you're if you have no one you rely on yourself to be the voice of reason. and then it's 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 very challenging it's very hard to be like you know there for yourself because in the other priorities you you yourself you put always in the fourth or fifth place mm. you you're not in the first of of priorities you know like that is like i was i don't know i was reading or like listening to a podcast that said like you're more likely to give your dog medicine to finish that you know if you have like three weeks or four weeks of medicine that you have to take to finish the whole you're more likely to give it to your dog for him to become better uh i don't know a parasite or something that if you have the same parasite you 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 start feeling better and you're like okay and then you you're very um you're very tough to yourself then you never give the compassion to yourself that you need to and then that relationship with myself grew a lot through this journey yeah um even the way it started it started because i said i need to pay the promise that i did to myself and it was hard because you know i romanticized coming to your question coming back to your i romanticized that that you know like just gonna go there and do yoga do exercise you know eat healthy Mm -hmm. eat well um but in reality it's hard Mm -hmm. because you're off grid you have to plan even more you you thought that or my plan was like i'm i'm super well organized super well structured all the fucking time I just want to go like not planning yeah, anything. Yeah, you want to avoid structure. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm just going to be free, bro. You know, I realized that, oh, I'm free from structure is the most harmful thing you can do to yourself. Because mm-hmm. like I said, like, oh, I'm going to cook when I feel hungry. And then you realize that you you feel hungry and then you want to you wanna eat something now. So I ended up yeah. eating shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I hate white bread, the one that you buy. In the, yeah. And then I ended up having white bread with peanut butter and I was like this is not healthy mm-hmm. after a little while so I have to start planning my meals again you know it's like coming but I had so much resistance to that it's like I don't want to be again structure because you know that's that's that doesn't go with my hippie vibe right mm-hmm. now um but even though like so it's, it's a lot of like some days I will wake up it was one day I remember uh, probably a week before I had this talk to my dad where he like why are you doing this to yourself like you're, you're wasting the best years of your life and then he said to me when you when you're gonna be serious with your life and that hits me a lot and then and then I woke up like I was in a place like this very peacefully it was in a where is that? It was in New South Wales, probably close to Cove Harbour. Yeah. And it was in a place like that. I stayed the night and then I went to visit some like bush walks and then some some waterfalls. Mm-hmm. Came back so tired and I, I was just crawling and then I fell asleep. And then some in that stage somehow I woke up feeling like, shit, what am I doing with my life? This is my 30s. This is where I should just, you know, be hustling so hard. And then it started like giving me like a panic attack. And then I had panic attacks before and I said like, Jesus Christ, I'm having a panic attack right now. And then I just like, so just I sat down and then I started doing Wim Hof. And then after a little bit, didn't even finish Wing Hof, like good thoughts started coming up. They're like, um, I was doing this, um, this kind of um, meditation when I have a mirror and then I start talking to myself. Like, remember dude, like you promised that to me mm. a long time ago. I was working so hard. 
and I just wanted you to be here right now. And then I just start talking to that. And then start talking to the mirror and then just like after like forty five minutes I start feeling that the 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 craziness start because it tingles. Like mm. having a panic attack is is real and then people like it tingles your body and then you're gonna pass out like because you start like hyperventilated it's 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 not it's not a joke mm. and then i start like feeling better because of the wim hof because the way i was talking to myself and then little by little when i finished that meditation session talking to myself i was like and this is the reason why we're here right now yeah. and then that's how i finished that meditation and then i remember so strongly that this is the reason why we're here right now is because that lesson needed to be learned my dad was the or that conversation with my dad was the main reason why I had this panic attack. But having that panic attack was the result of having all this stress coming up. Because mm. it was some questions that I had and some doubts I have to myself. Like, it is, it is like I'm doing, I'm taking a break from one of the biggest time in my life where I could be productive 100%. I could go hard. But I've been going hard for like 10 years already, struggling and hustling to get to this point. And if you don't honor yourself, rewarding to like all these promise, um, there was, this is this guy called um, Robin Sharma, you know Robin Sharma? He wrote a book, um, it's called The Monk Who Sold His Ferrari. It's a really good book uh, about these people that are in a high level of proactivity, but very miserable. And then he has one, one course called the 5 a.m. club, that they, and he also said like, athletes learn the importance of resting mm -hmm. very early on in their careers. That's how they can kill it every time they go to. Like Kobe Bryant will just go and go for hours hours and hours just like throwing shots on the on the on the on the field to train and he's one of the hardest um workers um everybody knows he will just like train so hard and he's like i'm gonna overtrain it any motherfucker that comes to me mm -hmm. but he knew the importance of like resting and sleeping and then he knew that you know when it's time to rest, it's fucking time to rest. Right. Like rest but, is work. Like it's like working, like it's a part of your work. And this is my biggest struggle in my life, resting. And then sleeping especially. I still having so much trouble with sleeping. Because mm -hmm. for me, sleeping was a batch of like weakness for so long. Like I just like fucking resting. Resting is for pussies. Mm. You know, like you have to hustle for so long, as long as you can, mm -hmm. for as long as you can. And... And then in my brain, also doing all this like self-development, um, I learned that from early on age, resting was um, a sign of not seeing my parents because my parents will work until really late at night. And then as a kid, you will, you like to see your parents. Mm -hmm. And then my mom will arrive like around 11 o'clock or 10 o'clock and then so as a kid, as a, what I don't know, two, five-year-old kid, six-year-old kid, going back to, going to bed like 11, 12, is pretty late. Mm. And then for me, going, going to bed late was a sign of um, happiness because mm. I could see my parents. I didn't understand it until like two years ago, man. Like why I have so, so much trouble? I don't have trouble sleeping. And a lot of my friends said to me like, dude, what are you talking about? You fucking fall asleep anywhere. Yeah. And it's like, you don't understand. I fall asleep anywhere because I'm tired all the time. Mm. You know? Like, if you don't talk to me right now and you give me like 15 minutes, I'll probably fall asleep. Mm. Why? Because my body is always like looking for a source of recharging. Mm. So I don't sleep well. And then it's been a struggle in, into my life, how to feed into my, my work schedule time to rest and into my life time to sleep like I sleep six to seven hours a day 
and then I think eight hours will be the optimum for me but it's still struggling even mm -hmm. now like I schedule my my day from the night like so I need to sleep at this time okay so I need to wake up this time so I need eight hours of sleep so it means that I need probably nine hours so a extra half an hour here to fall asleep and extra half a half an hour 15 minutes to wake up and then you know mm. just be s smoothly waking up um, and then I plan backwards my day yeah, you're definitely... but but it's still like it's too hard six out of ten times mm -hmm. I'll follow the, the schedule even though I'm trying to be so when it's so hard when you're very extrovert because most of the people won't go to bed at nine o'clock so you know like it's hard to like dude I so get that yeah that because socializing becomes a form of recharge mm. so yeah it's at night but say for me like if I get home late and I'm say I'm with like my partner or like I'm with my family or something I can just get stuck in endless conversation because that's I'm like you like I would recharge like that mm. and then I feel fantastic and I'm like oh what the hell it's you know it's midnight, midnight mm. and then... I need to get up at six the next day and then yeah you're tired but sometimes I'm like I actually kind of feel better sometimes and that's dangerous because yeah. then you get less sleep exactly and then uh, how how constant you do that and so exactly. it's, it's a daily struggle for me mm. and then going back to the to the van i just like i will have time to rest and then time to do it and i still didn't do it mm. the, 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 the times i could i rest my it took me three three months to get this workaholic mind shut up mm -hmm. you know remember the day that i just oh didn't think about work today and it was nine o'clock mm. fuck this is good and then you know like I, I was I was away from work probably nine months. Yeah, okay. And out of that nine months, I did seven months in Australia. Mm -hmm. I tried to travel around Australia, but I did up and down the coast so far. And then it took me like three months to actually stop thinking about work and then you think that oh you know holidays you know i'm just gonna go and then switch off my my work brain it doesn't happen like that it's just like you know, especially when you go hard all the time once you just slow down it takes a while like it's, it's just a process that you detaching from you know yeah. and and then after a little bit you're like oh, this feels good and then that's when they all these all these things that I have repressed start coming up. Mm. All these anxious that what am I doing with my life? Yeah. Uh, um, all these questions, and then I have to like sit down, write your journeys, and then process all this information. That's so interesting that it was multiple months that it took you because you were so in that loop, in that structure of just work, repeat, 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 that it like, you couldn't just, it didn't take you to just stop. Yeah. It took you time to actually like unwind from that. Yeah. And but people don't give themselves that time. Yeah, I think what's so more amazing is the fact that you stuck with it. Yeah. Like you could have easily gone for two weeks Fuck and been like, oh, work. I don't enjoy this. I just want to get back to the grind. But the fact that you knew and, and stuck with it and saw it out and now like meeting you because we didn't know the person you were back then but meeting you now you are very calm and you you have a very like aware uh, a sense of self-awareness about you and i'm sure those three months were a massive catalyst for that you can tell you have that balance in check between yeah. the work hard it's like it's like um jordan peterson always talks about um you need to know that you have that monster within you mm. but then learn how to control yeah. it mm. yeah and then that that's that's actually really true uh I think all my previous experience with withdrawal, so cold turkey, it will give me this, this because those same, same, uh, like, pan, no panic, yeah, panic attacks, you mm -hmm. know, like, just like, fuck, I need to be proactive, and then there's something like you cannot think but that, and then now I have the tools within me to just like, okay, I need meditation, I need breath work, I need just go to fucking cold water, mm -hmm. you know, because that's another good thing about cold water and Wim Hof, you know you go to cold water 
you could be heartbroken. There's no heartbroken that in that moment will yeah, be like, probably. I need to get the fuck out of here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My body is fucking freezing. Yeah. Ah! Just it's like, yeah, it gives like all this amount of pressure that release. And you're like, ah, okay, now, now it's not. Now, okay, let's, let's, let's change it. Okay, now, now it is. Now it, okay. Yeah, Warwick, yeah, it's important, but you know, I when I quit my job in Coffee Brothers, um, they offered me to stay. They said to me, I'll give you 2% of the business if you stay. Oh. And I said, Shit. I said, I don't want to work because I said to them, I don't want to work for you no more. I want to work with you. He's like, I'll give you 2% of the business. I said, no. And I said, why? I said, because my plan is working this like coffee is my life mm -hmm. you're gonna you're gonna we're gonna work together but in what i have i'm 33 now i have 40 years of of work on me maybe 35 and i said what is a year of on a 35 year mm. right if you if you extend it long enough this is very very good like you know you just take a little while yeah as someone you being such a hard worker to see to look that far ahead like mm. that is so hard <laughs> yeah but you know like all these people that you see like they tell you gary v is a big um advocate of advocate of um see the big pictures like mm. you know the the lack of patience is you know is what what kills everyone mm -hmm. and then people you know people that learn how to like go later in life you know just maybe not here right now maybe a little bit late and then that in my life that later gratification that became uh, working really hard for a visa that I didn't know if I was gonna get like now a lot of people especially because I talk a lot with South Americans mm -hmm. and then they said oh you're very lucky you know you have a, a, a sponsorship now like all really? stuff you like you like you know citizenship now like you you're sweet you know you have it all and I said dude um, sometimes I call people in the bullshit I said you know how long it took me to go to my first holiday because mm -hmm. they go like oh no I'm going to Byron Bay this week and I said I'm there <laughs> right there is why you're not gonna have visas mm. they're like how fuck you how the fuck do you say that and i said dude i'm seeing it like 90 percent of my friends wanted to have visa too but what they wanted to do is have visa and then go on holidays every six months that doesn't work bro like you like i said i work non-stop mm. and then i work do you, do you think which boss is gonna give the visa to the guy that fucking work their ass off or the one that takes holidays every six months. And then like me, there's 20 people w wanting the same visa mm -hmm. that you want. So statistically, you're not gonna get it. Mm -hmm. And then like, and then like, and I said, I'm not mean to you. I'm actually very um, nice to you at saying this because probably no one has ever said that to you. Exactly and then, how it is. Mm. And then like, do you think I'm like? Do you think I'm lucky? And I said, ask those guys how many times they saw me like, fucking about to give up. Mm. And I said, if I'm telling you my story, you will say like this guy. I got rejected like seven times from like, people um, saying like you're too over qualified, you're underqualified, you're not good enough for coffee, you're not good enough for hospitality, um, your visa will never get granted. You know like even when it got granted the business got uh, bankrupt i start i have to start all over and then those sort of things when you're down and then you're just like i'm working so hard and mm. then all of this for nothing that's why i'm saying like having a visa is um it's a very mental marathon because uh -huh. like you you just feel like you're just like you're gonna run like marathon and run. then you step on the rock and then you just fall and then you're like mm. fuck then he hurts and then you're like fuck it's still so much mileage to go so many mileage to go and then you're tired you're thirsty all this mental stuff and then you're like 
Fuck. And then someone calling you from here, like, I just give up, you know? I have so much respect for anyone who operates and on then, like that, like a student visa, any sort of like, and for people to have that, the lack of like known, it's like once it gets past this date, I don't know. Um, like I've worked with a bunch of people in like similar age to us or even younger who come here, work two jobs, also do a full-time degree, have to find living, like they have to find living for themselves. It's like that person's my age and I don't have to go through any of that. Like I am blessed with a family that I could always stay at. It's like, it's, 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 it's a, the level of respect I have for that is like. It's, it's, and it's, it's a blessing and a curse on our end as well because mm. There's less motivation for us to get after it because we have it so easy. Like I'm, there's never going to come a day when I wake up and Australia tells me I have to leave the country. That doesn't happen for me. Exactly. So why would I? Why would I work hard? Why would I do anything? Mm. So yeah, to your point. Th that's why I also like respect guys like you that are so self-aware of these kind of things very early in their lives because mm. I know like eventually you're gonna start traveling and then you will see and then that that troubles will make you grow up a lot mm -hmm. and then you're like fuck it's, it's you know different and then mm. you know this especially if you go to like places like South America or India or Africa and then you stay there and then you become a little bit of a local thing there I'm sorry seeing that the way the the country operates is 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 different and and the way like I come here and, and life here is easier but I've struggled so much more here. If I would yeah. be in Colombia, yeah. I'll be in the same like position as you are. Mm -hmm. Like, um, what would I struggle? I don't, you know, like I'm have my family. Mm. Something goes bad, you know. Like I go back to my 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 comfort zone where my dad is my mom is there you know providing for me it's like you always have this parachute right mm. so actually that that guy that i told you the doctor in chinese medicine he told me like growing up is not you know having more birthdays or like you know this is growing up one of the times that i just went down and i said dude i can't do more he's like you can because you're the only one providing for yourself mm. like you think having like growing up is having kids and all? no growing up is knowing that no one else will take care of you but yourself mm -hmm. so it's up to you to to change your life mm. you know 100%. you want yeah and that's like that stuck in my head for so long like that's one of the reasons why i grew because in colombia something will go wrong i'll just run to my parents you mm -hmm. know and my dad, I know, you know, I could just get into big debts and then, you know, my dad kind of like, you know, if I get a struggle. So I stopped trying so hard to pay my debt. Or maybe I will pay my debt, but there will be a time that, you know, if it's too hard, my parents will like, okay, you know, like, you know, I, I, I'll help you out until until you, you get back into your feet. But here is not an option. You're like, fuck. I, I, my leg is not working, yeah. you know, fuck, need to fucking make coffees, you know, like, yourself. exactly. Yeah, yeah the, the, the life boat coming. Yeah, starving yourself of all those luxuries, mm. like, Very. definitely does you good. And it's the things that you don't think about. Mm. Like, it's you know, if you, yeah, if you did get injured, it's like, oh, shit, how am I going to, like, I need to go to the doctor. Like, how am I going to go to the doctor? I'm going to have to pay for that. Like, it's just like all the different and things then, you exactly. need to think about. And then that's also when, you know, that's what my mom always like, you know, when you have a partner, so when I when I when I almost broke this this ankle, uh, <clears throat> my mom was like, "Oh, you know, so glad that you're with your with your girlfriend." I didn't understand there, but mm. yeah, it's kind of like you you become um, a burden to to someone, but once you know it's your partner, you kind of like yeah, you know, like you're she, okay she, she she she's she's. She loves me, and then you know she 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 wants to care for me, um, because even when it's your good friend, and you know like sometimes, by the end you're like, oh man, you know it's I'm, I'm a, it's it's less of a, it's less of a oh you know I can be like completely uh, here just mm. comfortable because you're like I need to get better. But that's the thing also like you you kind of like force yourself to get better, you know? Mm. Like, I need to get better and to be really good with my physios. Before, when I was with my girlfriend, I kind of like, like on the physios, you know, like, you know, like, oh no, it's because today I feel really, 
really bad or whatever you know you just spend time with your girlfriend so mm. you don't do like physios but when you know like you have to fucking provide for yourself or like you're in a house and mm. or you're by yourself and then it's hard for you to like even move you're like Fuck, i need to move fast yeah and then stupid exercise that you think physio is oh, just a stupid exercise just like doing this but the amount of like that's why they are there for a reason because the amount of improve because before when i broke this this when i injured this um elbow ankle like doing this exercise with my ankle it was like go up and down for those ones that are here um hurts a little bit so you just go this range and you're like oh, but this so you know one two three four five six seven eight nine ten mm. but now like you have to go up and yeah. down up and down and then just go around mm -hmm. seems to be so stupid but if you don't do that you will never heal properly mm -hmm. and then you just get this like range of motion that are so limited mm -hmm. and it's harder if you if you let it pass for too long it's harder and then coming back to this is like you don't want to be a burden to anyone and then so you want to get better so but the best time to get better is be mindful about you like you need to provide for yourself so it's kind of this responsibility that you have to yourself mm. to be the best version of yourself at all times for sure. and then you know just so there's also another guy that i follow his name is matt diabella i don't know if you heard no, I don't know. he's a really good guy on youtube he's um um have you heard of this um of documentary the minimalist yeah so that's the guy that produced that oh right yeah yeah right. so the, this guy is a minimalist as well and then um and he is also about like self-improvement and then he has a rule is he uh, he has to do things that um makes him uncomfortable every three months yeah. so it's either you know ask a girl out mm -hmm. or play play guitar in front of you know your friends or like go an open mic or do wim hof yeah. something to like you know push yourself and then he's like and then since since i took that the amount of improvements you don't see it but you know like these little things and then you're like okay it's, it's not that bad you know it's mm. not that bad and then you just start getting this motion of like oh i'm gonna do things that makes me uncomfortable every two three months mm. you know could be you know big things for you such as like i'm gonna take a uh, year off or whatever yeah. you know like things that oh but you warm up to it by you know just like i'm gonna ask this girl out mm. you know and this is because you know you you have like a rush of adrenaline this chemical things happen in oh, your 100%. body you know like and then especially that interactions with human beings especially from the other sex you just like i don't know when when you when you are next to the girl that yeah she's pretty but i'm not really into her you have this swag on you and then you know like you manage this like uh, so this girl probably will be attracted to you because you mm. are very confident and, mm. and when you really like the girl next to you you are the most stupid yeah, you yeah, know yeah, you yeah. come out with the stupid questions the stupid Sweaty, things to say awkward. you know and then like, you also you just harder awkward. on yourself because of that yeah yeah and then you know learning how to do these things and then you know like learning to recognize all these chemical reactions in your body takes a lot of mysticisms out of mm. it so you're like oh i'm feeling anxious so i need to calm down because now you know how to like biohack your body into like a calmness and, you're... <sighs> <laughs> and then doing this makes you so happy yeah. so sometimes i'm driving and then i can see that i'm just kind of very nervous or very rushed yeah. and then i just like there's a traffic light and i'm just like <laughs> and then it goes into your whole body yeah, and then yeah. you're like i'm now happy yeah. and then all of a sudden it's like going driving more smooth yeah and then it's enjoyable and it's immediate mm. you can immediately just enjoy your day now exactly. mm. so. what do you um with with like mulatto and stuff what do you envision the future is for you over mm. the next five to ten years it's funny you said that like my plan right now that's why i'm here in, in sydney right now I'm doing the business plan for Mulatto. Mulatto started a bit of a side hustle for for this mm. long year. But my, my business is um, cr creating these um, 
coffee company that will um, sell a lot into like social projects that um, makes a big awareness into what coffee farming is and then how much mm-hmm. how much effort farmers put into providing coffee for people and then how little they get paid so in in australia for example these numbers might be off because i haven't done this in a while the the mathematics and then the the money that farmers go through because they have to plant and harvest and farm these these beans for these trees for like three years Mm -hmm. before a coffee plant will get um, uh, coffee and then even in south america where it's very fertile Mm -hmm. um, places like in australia probably four and a half to five years before they start blooming Um, and then they get absolutely fuck all for 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 their work for three years um that um is unbelievable and it's like heartbroken for people like me that enjoys the whole process because my family has been like coffee um farmers and then we know all these like producer um side of the business that are the most in my opinion the hardest one because they kind of don't have their jobs you know like a farmer will wake up at 4 35 in the morning and then just go and then take care of the plants take mm-hmm. care of the farm you know like take it's a lifestyle it, it's a lie but it's hard like mm. it's, it's farmers are mentally tough people because they have to do it mm. because they have to provide to their family and then working working in farms i don't know if you have done it before mm-hmm. but Never. it's hard on your body mm-hmm. even though like yeah you know you have to do these things and there's a lot of um tools and technology that helps but in colombia still a little bit behind so they they work around 16 hours a, week, a day for seven days a week and then out of a coffee a kilo of coffee that they produce um, here they get you you as a final seller you will do like 50 55 dollars per kilo okay. guess how much they get Wait, so the retailer the, the retailer sells Australia. it for 55 ish a kilo like already roasted there's some yeah. process going through yeah but they're really but, just know, collecting it from the wholesaler and yeah, then, like, and then the farmer in Australian dollars. Like this is we're talking in yeah, Colombia. Yeah, in Australia. Yeah, yeah, back in Colombia. Um, How much did they get? Per okay. kilo. Per kilo. Uh, should, like I'm just gonna throw like I don't know what 15, 20 bucks. It is probably- uh, wait hold on are you saying how much they're gonna make on it or no, how much they're just gonna they, get, they, get, they, get how much do they sell they, those they, they sell those, those bags things. for? That's a, yeah, 50, so a 15. kilo this Australian sell it for fifty five. How much do they? get sold it for uh 10 bucks they usually sell it for like 50 cents to oh a dollar goodness so and this is like a good price you know 50 cents 50 cents like they they get that like well now now it's a bit more because now like coffee industry is getting more aware and there, there's a lot of companies especially in australia that trying to promote that sort of things you know like farmers are you know but fair trade and direct trade and all this stuff so but now it's getting better but it's still like no more than two dollars per kilo i mean there's a lot of money that goes into logistics of course there's a lot of money that goes into um paying tax no coffee doesn't pay taxes but you know like the taxes between like getting the the raw material yes, into like the whole, the, 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 the whole the process to like tax that you're gonna pay taxes and all that but but it's still ridiculous for three three years of work that you get that little mm. bit of money mm. so my gosh and in the fact that there's like i think the most frustrating thing in my head is that there's so much money in coffee but it's just all going to one end it, it is so like and then now it is like you know just 
overly concentrate there and then i don't want to say that you know those guys are like a greedy motherfuckers but no because there there are some of them that are trying to send money and then mm. more and more coffee companies are selling. that's why that's one of the reasons why i don't do starbucks i i could be like the other day when i was traveling around europe uh, i really wanted a coffee and then there was only starbucks and i said there's no way i will go to a starbucks there's not any fucking way because they even pay even less and then the, the amount of contracts they log those farmers into are ridiculous because it's like they have no choice because they have yeah. not oh may, maybe because they well, it's too good they, to pass up or something they, there's it's too good like, to pass up in the in the immediate in yeah, the immediate yeah. time it's oh. and they, they need don't. they need gratis, they need it now yeah so it's like they don't because, have the because they also have necessities and in yes. south america and central america that there's there's a lot like doesn't doesn't matter if i get shoot tomorrow I just don't need to get shoot today, mm. you know, because you know, like, so is they they play a lot into those sort of things. That's amazing that you are so anchored to your your morals and ethics mm. that despite you wanting a coffee so badly, you wouldn't fall in. I think that's very admirable. And then uh, like it's like oh, Jesus, like, and then like yeah, that's 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 all. I'm not saying that. I mean, I admire mcdonald's and starbucks way of business in terms of how productive mm. or how well well because they they have they have to do something right in order to be these massive mm. things but the, the things that they use people so bad so, uh, i don't know like you know the model will need a little bit I think that they don't put enough attention into that mm. because they know they will cost them so much money and mm -hmm. then why will they do that if there are people that are willing to sell their coffee mm. so that if there is more of us that are selling are buying coffee better mm. they will have less um, necessity to sell it to those guys so sooner or later the market will change um, but, but needs to you know it. exactly someone is so like I'm saying that here is really unbalanced and then they, there's not enough awareness just yet you know like you sh you get shocked like that so if I said guys how about if you pay 50 cents more for your coffee and I will assure you like I'll pass on to all this information um, to my final customers to see how they affect the, the guys at the front. Mm -hmm. You will be uh, willing to pay 50 cents extra, right? Yeah. For well, for you, 50 cents extra here in Australia is not much. Yeah. Over there, it's a lot. Yeah. So course. you're just like, oh, you know, I'm going to do this because it feels good, right? Um, mm -hmm. And even if it's a selfish interest, it feels good to me. Oh, I'm just going to make the life better for someone else. Mm -hmm. And then that part needs to get into that other end, right? Mm -hmm. So finally in that um, is what I'm very um, putting all my effort on to right now. So that's now that's why I'm doing all this business plan. Because even though I say like, I'll, you get me 50 cents, but to me get those 50 cents to, to the, um, the farm mail will cost me probably 50 cents, you know, mm. paying taxes, all this stuff. You know, like a lot of people that do social projects, are very naive into the financial stuff. Mm -hmm. They just want to help, and then they just receive that that money, and then they just want to sell sell all this part back to origin, mm -hmm. and then they don't know like all the financial side, and then they ended up going bankrupt. Mm -hmm. So you know, like you need to be also business savvy to do that way, mm -hmm. the right way. Right. So for you, it seems to be you're trying to focus on making sure you have the right model and plan to do something in terms of... The yeah, like, yeah. you know, like, I'm going to do social products, like, they're going to be sustainable. Yeah. It's not going to be like, oh, you know, I'm going to sell, send all this money back, and then in three years, I have no business. Mm -hmm. Because I I didn't take into consideration that it will cost me tax money, and then, you know, like, tax here, tax there, and then back in Colombia, you have to go tax and all these money that disappear mm -hmm. somehow into like pass it on to to give it to the right people yeah um so i need to like work all this thing out in order to just go through straight to making the impact i need mm -hmm. to do 
So I need I need the business to to do well too. You no, know? I need to sell coffee. And even though right now it's not the price I wanted, you know, it's not the the way I wanted to get back into the farmers, is is getting there. You know, I'm I'm building this business. So my my business is bringing coffee from my my family in Colombia, and then put it in here and sell coffee to roasters here. That's that's my main. That's when I started. Uh, working with coffee, that was my project. Mm-hmm. I want to change life of farmers in Colombia, right? And then I want to create impact. But in order to do that, especially in Colombia, with the amount of corruption, mm-hmm. you need to be a really good businessman. Mm-hmm. That's why I'm learning. That's why I'm becoming here right now. That if I go to Colombia, I have the financial power, but the, the savviness into business to sit, like to sit down with guys that will try to take me down because of the way I'm gonna do this business I'm gonna do this business is like I I'm I'm, I'm not gonna get rich out of this mm-hmm. by doing this this kind of you know what I'm I'm not I'm gonna get rich out of this just because everyone is gonna is gonna want to work with mm-hmm. me and then I'm gonna I'm gonna put all this money over there for them because the balance the, the, the balance is like that I just I just need enough attention in this side to be here because I don't want them to get like over like oh you know like this guy is paying off like all these guys here are doing so bad that these guys mm. um, are taking all the money no, and you like, don't want them, them to be resentful yeah, exactly. and then it no. unbalances yeah, the scale exactly. again then, you know like it's, it's, it's fair like it's a fair transaction especially because I think it's the most sustainable way to go for coffee business because every time less and less people are getting into farms because who who the fuck want to work 16 hours to yeah. get paid for call yeah. if you can just you know get uh, a work washing dishes in the cities mm-hmm. uh, and you get paid more mm-hmm. get so like there's a lot of movement from from the farm or countryside mm-hmm. to towards the cities mm-hmm. because Obviously, it's less work. And a lot of the a lot of the pride goes out with that as well, because mm. a, a lot of farmers and people that work in those industries are very prideful of their work and their country and the product they produce. And you, I mean, you can't blame people for being like, why? Like, I don't really care about the pride. Yeah. I'm just happy to work less and get paid more and mm. have a, a different lifestyle. But if you had that, if you had that revenue stream, it's like think about innovation over a de- like five exactly. years, like people are going to start caring about their product a lot more. Like farmers will be able to mm-hmm. care about the product a lot more. Exactly. They'll have a lot more access to resource. Mm-hmm. It just mm-hmm. obviously built it up even more. And it's kind of amazing how you are very, you've established like a comfortable, like you've established a comfortable mindset with delayed gratification, mm-hmm. which has allowed you to have this business idea and has allowed you to be comfortable knowing it's going to be a slow, long, hard road. But, doing it the right way it's going to be the best way to do it and i think it, it's amazing how through your different struggles and and through living in the van and doing all these different things has almost come together to create like the product you are now and what you're going to do going forward mm-hmm. for sure yeah is there anything you want to touch on or talk about no well like it's pretty pretty amazing that the way this conversation have been through um, <laughs> yeah 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 uh, no no like just yeah like just um keep an eye on on these projects uh, mm-hmm. because it's gonna happen very soon i guess i hope um people are gonna get more and more um interested on on seeing the other side um and then i feel that in australia i've seen it because i haven't lived in any other like first world country where um i see these same kind of things that well, Colombia as well, sometimes people are less in touch with nature, especially with farming and all these kind of industries um, where people don't know where things come from. Like for me, like kind of like Australia um, produce, when I arrived to Australia, it was like, it was so mind blowing for me because all the fruits look so similar. Like they are like, they are photocopies of Mm. each other. 
and me growing up to in in very close to nature in farms and stuff i've seen like in trees this this pine uh, this orange next to this orange mm. like and then i've never seen this orange in in australia sometimes in harris farm that they say like the ugliness the ugly the ugly produce i just this is the best produce because i know this is actually less actually, chemically yeah, yeah. Uh, induced you know yeah. that's what my mom says she always goes to harris farm to that basket and you know what the fuck is that that stuff's cheaper i know right that's it's the like, cheapest stuff that's the cheapest stuff and you're like that's oh, I'll that's take real that. I'll t- i didn't know those those things as an organic section until I arrived to Australia, it's like organic. So where where organic the other come from? You know, like, yeah. you know, it's wow. like so much. The the other thing was uh, like surprise for me was like um, the limes with no seeds, or the, the seedless fruits in Australia. And then back when I was learning English, um, it's like some question about fruits came on. It's like the most important, like the most amazing thing for me is like these seedless things. And then my teacher is like, yeah, isn't that amazing? And I just like, yeah, but I have a question. How do you get the next, the next Mm -hmm. uh, generations? And she, she was probably 60 years old back then. She's like, I've never questioned myself that. Mm. 60 years of age. And she never questioned if you don't have seeds, how are you going to get the next generation? And then... That was the first thing it came to my mind. Very convenient, but how the, the, this is yeah, the, this is not this is not what the fuck. Yeah. There's something wrong with this. It's not <laughs> something good. It's something wrong with this, yeah. uh, because this is just laziness, you know. Just like pouring lime, just pulling the the seeds out, is is not that hard, mm. and it's something nat- natural. Mm. Um, those those sort of things like people in australia are less in touch with with nature and grow and produce Mm. i think that people should be more like you know when yeah curious about like we're so like okay with just we have the final product and we don't we're just i'm so wide like that because i'm mm. talking about me i'm not even talking about anyone else like i just i don't even think about it i just know it's there and it's mine because there's there's no like incentive to think about it like i Like, literally three months ago, I didn't even know that, like, apples didn't always go round and perfect until I was at his house and his mom had the box of fruit that, and fruit and veg that was all, like, uh, what do they call it? Like, yeah, ugly, ugly, ugly fruit, ugly veg. And imperfect. Imperfect. And I genuinely had no idea. And I was like, of course, that makes so much sense that it wouldn't all grow the same. And however, I never questioned it. I was, I was quite confronted. I was quite confronted by that. And... It is, it's scary because it's like, well, I'm just eating these like genetically modified fruits and veg that have been crafted to just be perfectly round and look the most appealing. And it's, yeah, it's crazy because yeah. we just consume it. It's just, all we yeah, have. maybe that is the what we need to do more of. It's just question stuff. And like, what, to your point, there's no why. Like, why, like we've never needed to question it because it's always available. So if it was like, oh, there's going to be a shortage of this. I feel like naturally then you start to care about it more. But it's just, it's always available. Mm-hmm. And it's the curse, the curse of being so blessed sometimes. Exactly. And then if you go to like Southeast Asia or mm-hmm. South America, you'll see things taste way better. Mm-hmm. way better why because um here in australia for them to harvest it in such a great they have to harvest it really young mm-hmm. so they don't get enough nutrients out of the trees so so they just get into these big containers and then they gas it and then to slow um the caving mm-hmm. and then the, enough enough time for for them to go and then sell it to different places and all this stuff and then it, it, it takes out of the nutrients because everything needs to be so quick so mm-hmm. fast so everything so so okay it, it looks it looks good enough just taken out of the of the tree and then but you don't know the process inside actually because mm-hmm. that's if you talk nature you know that that has come to a process where they gonna receive the nutrient from the tree itself you know and the tree will pass it on to the fruit and then the fruit will 
eventually pass it on to you, mm. right? And then that does does the, just the normal thing. Mm. And then we don't know how much food is so important in our life until we don't have, mm. you know? Exactly. And then actually, when I got to Colombia, no joking, the avocados are like that. Fuck. Wow. And then it's like so creamy, so beautiful. Get me a and then yeah. the bananas, the bananas in here for me taste so plain. In Colombia, banana is like so much sugar and potassium that you're just like, I need to take some water with it. It's wow. like, you know, things like that. The tomatoes taste really citrus. Like sometimes it breaks your, if you eat a tomato like this, it breaks your tongue because you have so much oh. C vitamin and stuff like that. Um, so like, and why? Because they they still doing maybe nowadays they are doing more and more this way because the production side or but still way, way more more natural. more natural that that and then you only see that when you go to places like South America and then you see like actually those fruits taste better and then you just go on the street you just mm. go, and then there's a guy you know under the sun you know mm. with a with a towel here just just taking the mosquitoes or the flies out <laughs> and then you're just like oh you know they wash it give it to you and you're like yeah mm. and what's what's amazing as well is most australians would probably go over there and be like oh that's worse they would see yeah. it and their initial reaction be like oh that apple's not perfectly round that that must be like dirty and I don't yeah, want to yeah, eat that. Exactly. I don't want to eat that. You know, like yeah, I might get sick. But that's the cleanest, <laughs> yeah, healthiest yeah, apple yeah, you could yeah. probably ever eat. That's insane. Damn, yeah. I want to go to Colombia now. We um, eat some avocados. We always finish off the pod with a challenge from the guest. Okay. So it can be anything from you, but it has to come from you. So we want something that we can do during the week of the of this podcast release. So we'll get released on a Friday and throughout that week till the next Friday, we'll complete a challenge of your choosing. Okay. It can be anything relating to what we talked about today. We just want it to come from you. I it think it'll be, it'll be good. Yeah, it'll be good. Like I'm doing this thing is like maybe do something that makes you uncomfortable. Mm. Okay. And then, you know, if you, if you like the challenge, you know, you can just repeat it every now and then. Mm -hmm. Repeat, repeat it like doing every something that makes you uncomfortable. It could be something you know as simple as um, telling your boss, you know, to like calm down on you, or telling you know whatever. Um, but it has to be generally like genuinely uncomfortable, uncomfortable because that. And then you, you'll see. And then write it down and see how. Maybe it, sometimes the 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 um, results wouldn't come straight away. You know. Mm -hmm. um, I remember when you know um, I played I play um, the guitar and I sang in Shelly Beach, and then that was really confronting, you know, mm. just like seeing people there. And then, but the good thing about that was that people are really nice to you, and then mostly um, you have all this judge on yourself. But that set me up for the next time I sang in like an open mic, it feels uncomfortable, but less. Mm -hmm. And I just felt it, I just like, okay, I know I'm gonna get this rush. I'm gonna get yeah. this adrenaline. Mm -hmm. Been here before, yeah. it becomes a familiar feeling. And yeah. then, you know. Being comfortable with discomfort. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's an awesome challenge. I love that. I'm gonna, yeah, I think usually the route I take with that is like physical. Mm -hmm. Like I do something physically uncomfortable, but I think I'm gonna try and switch it up. Just do something that isn't physical related because almost in turn that's more comfortable for me because mm. i'm used to doing physically uncomfortable shit mm. so i'm going to do something that's not physical yeah. that's another one when i was singing like before i wouldn't allow anyone to touch my throat i don't know it has something to do i just feel like i freeze like, yeah, right. and my my singing my singing teacher after like two years and that was that was one of my my uncomfortable thing for three months I have videos and everything mm. she just touched here for me doing that even to myself right now i still feel like when i do this I, I feel like a little bit of like wow. but when someone else does it and now like someone someone can do it someone can go there and then I, it, you'll let it happen yeah. it's uncomfortable it's you react but, but then you get but I just, like, okay go, go for it yeah yeah wow and um with your your project like how can people follow along oh so yeah so people could follow me like through juan dot mulatto mm -hmm. juan spelled j-u-a-n dot mulatto 
M-U-L-A-T-T-O, um, or Mulatto Coffee, Mulatto underscore coffee. And that's obviously all your coffee and everything you're going to move so, into with yeah. helping the farmers. So, yeah, so Mulatto and, and Juan Mulatto, so they're my two Instagram accounts. Um, Mulatto is all about van life and coffee related van life stuff. Also like a lot of like van hacks, van tools, like, and then my, all my, my kind of like journey as a person, while Mulatto is all about coffee business related, mm -hmm. and then coffee probably will go a lot with like coffee projects as in like uh, social projects with coffee and then all the stuff, so. Awesome. Mm. Well, listen, man, like, thank you so much for coming on. It's been mm. an absolute pleasure yeah, and a, a wonderful been conversation. Fantastic. It's been, it's yeah, been amazing. Yeah, like, do, no, no, it's been amazing to to share with this little time with you guys. Thank yeah, you very thank much, you so much for the chance. Appreciate yeah. it, bro. And appreciate the coffee. No, yeah, you yeah. freaking coffee. That's, that's had me go on this whole pod. Thank you, boss. Appreciate it. Thank you.